dignitaries of the Dais, Sarkund. the leaders of the industry, various stakeholders here, the initiator of this important process conflict, particularly everyone's the actors in the field, the farmers of the various uh, areas of Karnataka and other states of India, the other players of this important industry on pulses in India, and uh, my colleagues from Inglisat and other partners who are as interested in seeing to it that there should be a process revolution to take place in India. Let me welcome you to Ikrisa. And you know the word complaint is such an important word and I've noticed that you have been conducting seminars, conferences, summit, and now today, this year, you are using the word complain. If I have to relate this word complain to when the Roman Catholics are going to select their Pope, you know, it's such an important activity that they close it themselves, close it themselves in Vatican until they are able to select the Pope. It may even take one week, two weeks, or three weeks. And when you see the signal, the white smoke coming out from Vatican, then the Pope is chosen. Okay, what's the importance of that thing to this country on pulses that we are doing these next two days? Mention has been made that India is a vegetarian society and pulses is key to its nutrition and health. It's as important that all the minds and the hearts of the various stakeholders from the farmer to the trader to the policy makers and the scientists and the change agents and the teachers will have to come together and bring out the roadmap <laughs> to pulse self-sufficiency in India. That's the biggest challenge of this conference for the next two days. It is our hope that by the end of these two days, and with the good scoping of the challenges and the opportunities that are there before us starting now at this session, and because of the good diagnosis that we now have on the problems and concerns impeding pulses production and productivity, we now have the ingredients, we now have all the relevant knowledge and information to have that roadmap to process self-sufficiency for India. And again, it's that cultural change, it's that attitude to make it possible that will make the big difference in any activity. Without that cultural change, without that attitude, without that heart and the mind, for all the various stakeholders, the policy makers, the scientists, the farmers, the traders, businessmen, then this will always be a big, big problem in terms of increasing and even later on sustaining the level of production and or productivity in the pulses industry. We have lots of advancements in terms of improving the crops. I would like to mention the two crops that we are working on. 
This is chip P or pigeon P for that matter. There would be other pulses that are in the remit of various institutions in India. But these two crops that we have been working on for the last 38 years, I'd like to believe, and in doing with various partners all over India and the rest of the world, that we have advanced so far in terms of the genetics that we need to have at this point in time for the next 10 to 15 years. But it does not suppose to stop us continuing and enhancing and supporting the development of the genetics that should adapt itself to the changing environment, to the changing climate that is before us today. So, policies have been mentioned, and that we cite a number of cases along these lines in regard to policies. Take the case of irrigated agriculture vis-a-vis -vis rainfed agriculture. The investment given, and this is the, the, the facts or the, the, the observation we have made in India, in irrigated agriculture, particularly rice and, and those uh, crops that are supported by irrigation, the investment is <coughs> Hundred I mean for the, the investment level is say one hundred rupees compared to eight rupees in rented agriculture. So it's heavily skewed in favor of irrigated or more indoor agriculture. And that is now telling today in in terms of the developments that are there supporting red-fed agriculture today, where 60 to 65 of the population of India is, you know, at that split. So, this is also highlighting the importance of long-term strategy, good policy support. All these years, red-fed agriculture, dry-land agriculture has been neglected, and so we are very, we are reaping the fruits of that level of investment. 